Good day, friends, viewers, and followers. A little new project has begun. This is a Chinese-made clone of a EAR 834 phono preamp, right? Which is pretty popular and common and well-regarded in the phono preamp world. I've just gotten this kit. This comes directly from China. I bought it through the big auction website. And um, so this I'm going to... But this is in kit version, not an assembled piece. So I'll be opening this up, looking through all the, the quality and types of parts that comes with these. And um, so maybe help you a little bit decide if to buy these things yourself when you see them for sale. Right? Now again, this came from China. It's been open and resealed because my local customs um, authorities open boxes and check them for whatever types of contraband, right? Okay, that's the first look at inside. Very good quality, pretty sturdy. Um, uh, this is not really styrofoam. What kind of poly I don't know polyethylene foam? Uh, the box is about 14 inches by 13. This way, and uh, wow, you could see it's really um, certainly safely packaged. Okay, inside here, this is a power transformer in its own little foam house wow this is nicely packed boy that nothing could ever happen to that in this um this particular um enclosure of, of foam that's really really good packaging i'm surprised much better than stuff i buy from the states i gotta tell you all right so um and then these rest of the parts this is this is as i say kit form so that it should be getting a raw circuit board these are all the actual basic components you could see these sockets these yellow type um, signal capacitors, coupling capacitors, which should be hopefully polypropylenes, and then one watt metal film resistors, and electrolytics, and so on and so on. Now these are the things that you may want to upgrade. If you, if you, there are not many of these yellow capacitors in the circuit, and there's one. That's one of the components that people like to swap out for different upgrade quality or different types of capacitors and listen for the differences but the resistors should be pretty good i'm gonna to have to measure all and make sure that they're, they're within their tolerance and I'll, i would use those resistors right these are the external fittings like the feet iec connector on the back that has a fuse holder built in and what else the rca connectors a power switch and some hardware for the, the corner because the chassis itself has to be assembled. It's like flat pack. This is some heat sinks for the power supply regulators. And then the actual um, regulators are in here as well. Some more electrolytic power supply capacitors. And then you can see various screw type fittings um, for interconnecting. There's, there you go, that's one of the regulators there of those okay and down further down this this must be the circuit board itself but i'll leave this package for now i'm, I'm doing this one-handed so let's have a closer look at that a little later um and this should be this oh wow wow this is a very thick oh no it's it's a few pieces okay okay so this is the front and back panels of the unit and they're pretty thick aluminum especially the front panel this this one that you're looking at is the back panel It's probably about an eighth of an inch thick if not more maybe three millimeters that's the iec connector and the front panel which um, you're not seeing very well now you'll see that closer earlier but it's it's thick aluminum it might be thicker than quarter inch just about five sixteenth so that is i'm very impressed already with the um the external metal housing again this is probably side panels probably three millimeters so just over an eighth of an inch by my estimate and this would be this would be the top and bottom panels the bottom lid top lid bottom panel and again these look like thick aluminum and they're the black like flat black satin black anodized finish so okay so pa quality of packaging a plus plus okay everything is shrink wrapped sorry 
not shrink wrapped, bubble wrapped, um, tightly wrapped, and everything was well surrounded by a very stiff yet bouncy type of polyethylene foam. So I'm not really sure exactly what the name is. It's not styrofoam, okay? Um, and everything was well enclosed. The power transformer having particularly nice spot in the package, right? So A++ quality of shipping. Okay, so this um, further repacking is done. Uh, these had very, very heavy shrink wrap below the, um, the bubble wrap that you saw before. And I have the flash of the camera on so you could just get a look. It's got that brushed finish with, um, I guess, yeah, anodized black. So I'm very impressed with this enclosure. This, I guess this is the top one with the vents. Very impressed with this enclosure. That is really thick aluminum. I think it's an eighth of an inch, but it could be a little more than that. I'll check on the calipers just now. So this is the top and bottom. I'm just trying to handle them carefully so I don't scratch them, set them aside on some bubble wrap and in the box. I'll keep this box for the duration of the project as I assemble your closure. Um, these are the extruded sides, same finish. Again, very thick aluminum. That's about, I think that's like a 3 16 of an inch thick with the extrusions and little threaded holes at the end of those grooves so that you can, um, that's holding the, the bolts that are holding the whole thing together. And you see more um, threaded, they're all threaded, threaded bolt holes, right? So, I mean, this is so, so nice looking, really, really good. And this is the same. Here's that front and back covers. This one has, right, so this is the actual back. And that's where your phono is going in. It's labeled already. And here's, that's for the IEC. Um, there's a scratch on the inside here. But that's not going to bother me. Put a sharpie mark on that. Um, this is really thick. This is a, uh, this is an impressive piece of metal. It's the drilled front panel. It's got one hole for the power button, and it's really thick. It's about five sixteenths of an inch, right? And again, it has its little recessed, nicely um, bevel, you know, chamfered. Actually, it's more, it's more recessed. That level there, that lower level is not a, it's not an angle. What do I call that? A recessed hole, not a chamfered hole. Okay, so this is really nice. I feel to go ahead and assemble the enclosure, um, but I kind of may just leave it here for a while to um, not get um, moved around and scratched while I get a little more headway going with the circuit board so let's have a look at that okay so here's the circuit board it's a set of two this is the actual circuit and then this one is the power supply circuit right but you can see these extra little graphics where the um the heat sinks go and the capacitors go these big circles okay so there's when i go on the regular sites that sell these things i notice there's two different versions of the EAR phono preamp that we have here. Um, if you've been looking at these things and you're familiar with this, you, you already know what I'm talking about. There's another version that has uh, a longer rectangular board and it's got really thick ground copper traces on it. This is a different one that's a bit more compact and I guess it's got a different footprint and it's made for this enclosure. Um, or enclosures made for this. So there's two different familiar looks of circuit board when you look inside an EAR clone. Now looking at this board, thankfully, all the resistors and capacitors have their values printed right there on the board. It would not be cool if they weren't because guess what? This came without a schematic, which is a big negative for me um, I'm going to have to look around online for the EAR schematic and use that as a reference. But this um, 
is a bit of a drag because if I didn't know as much as I do, this kit would be kind of impossible for a beginner or even maybe a medium, a medium skill um, electronics builder. But I know enough about this that I can get around with just these values printed. So I wish I had more documentation. That's the one, the first and only negative, big negative comment I would make about this kit. Okay, so I'm putting out the small parts and quickly getting confused and then figuring it out um, in rapid succession over and over. Is a few. This is. It. Let's start with the power supply board. All the power supply circuit board stuff seem to have come in one bag, and the preamp stuff seems to be in another bag. So that helps. Okay, so we don't get things mixed up. But I'm following, looking at these instructions here, and looking at the parts. There's a trim pot here. This is a screw adjustable trim pot, and I'm not. Sh I I think so far that it goes here, but I'm not. Sure, I guess it is. I'll, I'll know when I fill up the board, but I don't know what it's for, right? Does it trim a voltage? Is it a hum balance? I don't know this circuit offhand well enough. I've got to go and print a circuit to to see what that means. My my initial look is um, it leaves me a little confused. There's also a spot for an LED light, and an LED is con is included here. But you what? There's no sense in putting an LED here because it's hidden in the enclosure, okay? So what this is probably for is for me to put two wires to go out and meet the um, front panel and put an LED in the front panel, but there was no hole drilled for that. So that is um, one of the things that shows that that enclosure and this, pre this circuit kit weren't really made for each other. They're just sort of generic um, parts that are, that are packaged together in a kit but they, they should all fit together, but there are a few little quirks like that. So as I go along, I'm gonna find a few more quirks and I'll figure out those quirks, right? So that's the first one. So what I like to do when I'm assembling these boards, um, my little experience from building guitar pedals is I start with putting in the lowest components first, right? If, for example, there are jumper wires, I'd put those in first, then I'd put, resistors and then and diodes and then move up to things like capacitors and any other larger components the idea being that if i put all the resistors in i can sort of lay it over like that and solder all of their terminals at the back and they would all lay flush they will all lay flat and then they won't sort of fall forward when they're when they're sitting under there then I'll move on to capacitors or whatever is next in height and I'll put those on and then flip them over and, and solder that way. So I usually start with the resistors, right? Here there's more, there are more tall components and um, very few resistors and diodes. So, you know, I'll just take this one a little differently to this. Um, they have these which are wire terminals right so let's say for example these these go here okay i could put two wires into there and screw them down and that makes the connection but because they're in an, a permanent enclosure i may as well just saw little leads there for example if these these are if these are for transformer leads there's no reason for me to really need to crimp i think i get a better connection by directly soldering in those those transformers. So I may just skip these, right? So let me go a little further. These I would only get into when I mount the transformer into the enclosure after it's been assembled. And when I mount these connectors, switch and um, plug receptacle on the enclosure itself. So that's the next step. This is another that's the enclosure part of the job, and this is the circuit preparation part of the job. Okay, so this is what I mean when I say that I start with the low profile short components. Here are all the diodes and resistors. I've measured each one, and every one is looks very accurate, and it's what it's supposed to be. Right, so when I put it like that, you bend the leads out, either inward or outward, however you want. 
and I kind of holds them in place but I could lay it nice and flat and it's not gonna bump around like if I had a um, tall parts on it so I can just leave it like this and go and do all my my solder joints now I did look at one video on here on YouTube that discussed building one of these it was by skunky skunky designs and skunky says if you build one of these go ahead and trust the parts because even though people are skeptical about these made in china parts and say that they're they're rip off brands and they're sort of um clone parts of other quality brands when skunky built one of these with the included parts and then one with the upgraded parts they sounded the same so go ahead and trust these parts quality but you know you still got to test everything to make sure it's all right it's no fun just blindly putting in parts and you can't figure it out later and it's difficult to troubleshoot certain parts when they're on the board so test everything first but go ahead and trust these kits are supposed to have good parts straight into the next point where i'm getting confused um the capacitors here aren't the values stated on the board this is calling for four 22 microfarad capacitors these four are 10 microfarads half the value so do i stop and buy the right value or should i just go ahead as since this is a power supply board and they have voltage regulators in it is it inconsequential that this is actually 10 microfarad half the stated value and then over here um they call for a 10 microfarad and a 100 microfarad and what's included this is a 10 yes but this is a 220 so this is bigger than that and there's no markings for the voltage of the capacitors these are small 25 and 50 volts capacitors these are 400 volts and they don't actually have a marking on there to see which voltage of capacitors it is so you need to know your circuits well enough uh, a, a beginner um, if a beginner had um, a mix-up of the values they wouldn't really know to look at this and figure out which voltages need to go where so that's another little problem the capacitors here are not really matching the board okay so i got through the power board in the space of about a half hour um, and as I mentioned before, I start with my resistors and diodes as the, as the lowest level, then put the medium height stuff, the trim pot and the, the small capacitors. And then the last thing I did was I put in these heat sinks, three heat sinks, and each one has a little MOSFET regulator attached to it. Is it really a regulator? I'm sure what it is, to be honest. And then I finally did these large capacitors, right? And I've flipped over and done all of the um, the solder joints at the back here and snipped off the leads as well, which you see all these things. So um, the, my tips are really just to, well, I use a lot of solder because this board is is the type where, let's, let's look at these holes a little closer, these bare holes. The um, copper connection goes through to both sides, right? It's not just on one side like all circuit boards. So for some of the connections, you need quite a bit of solder or you can use quite a bit of solder so that the solder drips through to the top part and you can see on some of these that um you know i've gotten the solder to come through by gravity and sort of wick themselves into the um the top layer now this has been very easy to do the, the circuit boards are very high quality and as i say there's copper traces um, on both sides actually hold on a minute yeah on both sides and the holes go through the copper goes through the holes to meet its the hole on top right or the, the the trace on top so it's getting a very good mechanical connection when you solder any of these parts on right so it takes a little more solder okay so i'm happy with this i have no way of testing anything until i actually have it in the circuit I've got to look up and see what this trim pot does and where I should set it when I first power the amp on. But other than that, I'm ready to move on to this preamp board. 
Okay, so starting on the preamp board again, I've organized my parts by height and I'm going low to high. So all the resistors first, then capacitors, which are sort of a medium height. These little ones too, about the same height, all of them. And then these are about the same height as the um, socket. So those will go last, right? Um, and, but again, I'm going to test all of the resistors, each one, as I put it in. And um, I'm going to do the same with these capacitors as I go along. Another quick word on this particular soldering technique. So when I put all the resistors in, well, I put about half in, or maybe maybe my third, about half. And I put them down. They're all at this point. They're all laying f completely flat, as flush as they would go. And I would pull the leads up a bit. I don't want the leads wh when I'm stuffing the resistors in. I'm tempted to bend the leads down like that, so the resistor stays in place. But if I solder it like that, it, they're pretty hard to trim off the um, the leads after soldering. So I kind of when I'm when they're face down like this, I pull them almost upright. Maybe just a little angle is, is all right. And then I will trim after soldering so that's the technique okay i've gone along to the capacitor stage and i'm finding a few things that are bothering me a lot but also some questions are answering themselves as i go along on the board like these yellow capacitor spots this pair is labeled on the board at 0.1 microfarad and here they're labeled on the board sorry i have a horrible blister on my finger on here on the board, they're labeled as 1.5, okay? But all of these capacitors are 0.1. So 0.1s, 0.1s, but the labeling is 0 0.1, 0 0.15. So I was cussing about that, but when I checked the schematic, I found the schematic to this, um, again, the Chinese-made preamps. Um, they're all supposed to be 0.1, so that's these are the values that were included are correct. Um, next thing, through a process of elimination, I'm seeing that the small capacitors have these two left over. These are also 0.1, but a smaller, smaller voltage, obviously, and it's supposed to go here. That's the only spot left for them. The problem is it's not labeled. It just has a capacitor labeling, not a value. So if these go here, what do they do? They go between the signal ground, which is, let me show you. Oh, you see these circles here? They connect all the grounds of the signal and various capacitor grounds and so on. And they continue on these traces to the output grounds, which go to the, um, the preamp, right? The hi-fi preamp. But here, these ground spots here get connected over to, yeah, Okay, so these same signal ground traces go to this end of the capacitor and the other end of the capacitor goes to chassis ground. So basically it floats the signal ground going through the chassis above the enclosure ground through these 0.1 microfarad capacitors. But um, I don't know if that is separated from the power supply grounds which come in here. These circular little... Um, holes here, which are the, the power supply voltage negatives. I don't think those are also f connected to the signal grounds, so to speak. So let me investigate a bit more. I am confused and I will answer that question as I go along. Okay, so I've done all the last soldering on this board and I've seen, I've done the sockets and soldered up all those capacitors I just mentioned. Um, again, I did go ahead and confirm that all of the grounds, including the power supply grounds, like where these stripes go, um, all connect to this, and they are floated through this onto the chassis ground. So the ground of the signal passes through this circuit without really um, directly connecting to the enclosure ground except through these right um i'll figure out the merits of that when it's all assembled and running i'm pretty happy i got through all of this in one session it's really only been about less about an hour and a half that i've sat down and done all of this so i'm patting myself on the back and i'm ready to move on to the enclosure maybe i should save that for another day it's no fun doing it in all in one session is it 
Okay, now my final comments on this board, I probably will take out these capacitors and upgrade them because besides the issue of the, the mislabeling, which I, I straightened out, um, I'm not happy with some of the small capacitors. This, these little ones here are supposed to be 110 picofarad, as you see there, and they actually measure something like 140-something and 120-something, so they're, they're both off. So I'm going to replace these with some nice silver micas, and I might go ahead and buy different capacitors in for these spots and keep them on hand so that when I get into testing and get accustomed to the sound of it, I can swap them out and, and see if there's some improvements to be had from different brands and types. But as far as these go, they pretty much just are not in spec, okay? Okay, in pulling out the enclosure pieces and giving some thought into starting the enclosure assembly I realized that the bottom panel the floor doesn't have any holes to mount these boards on the transformer I thought that they had various holes in it that would have suited these mounting posts each of these little corner holes gets a brass little standoff that elevates the circuit board about a centimeter or half inch which <laughs> about about that above the floor now in choosing where to mount them the priority is to keep noise in this music circuit as low as possible okay so i think this may be the best way to do it and it's a little different from the pictures in the ads of where i bought this i've come up with my own layout the idea is the music signal ac signals come in and out here so I'm putting this down in this corner to keep those wires between them as short as possible. Okay. Now, power supplies or the transformer can generate a little hum and it can actually vibrate a bit. So I'm putting this way up in front as far as possible towards the front panel, which is going to have the power switch. So yes, power needs to come here. So with this layout, your 120 volt AC cable comes in here. I'll put it up in this corner as close as I can, come into this transformer. This transformer sends out AC into this board, which converts it into DC. And your little switch on and off here would help with that. Then this puts out two separate high voltages for the left and right channels, and they're going to go here. And then there's a heater um, voltage, DC, which is a little low, lower hum than AC. And that's going to come here as well to heat the tubes. So this to me seems the ideal circuit. The most sensitive area, which is the input of the board, these little in, these pads, which will have a very short wire to these jacks here, is as far as possible away from the noisiest part of the amp, which is the, the power transformer, which again can generate a little bit of hum. So complete opposites. And then I could, if I want or it may be necessary, build a little aluminum channel that goes in an L shape like that to create a further shielding wall between the power section and the power cable from the, the music circuit to keep hum as low as possible. So I think this is a good layout and I'll do the drilling into the bottom panel that suits this mounting pattern. <laughs> Okay, this is my next building session the following night. Okay, so I've done a little research and I found out that it is normal in these to do all the ground floats through the diesel capacitors, but I also read that some of the assembled units that you buy, these are jumpered and there's just a wire going from one terminal to the next and that means that the grounds of the circuit board are directly connected to the chassis through these lugs, right? So I guess it's an option for me to determine which, with or without these capacitors, which one is less hum, okay? Next thing, I went online and I was glad to see that the layout that I, I chose here, which I described um, more like this, sorry, like this, was exactly what the assembled version of this product came with, right? Um, so I was glad to see that my, my reckoning was the same as um, what they've been doing, but they placed these parts a little closer together. 
So though it had the same layout, um, they didn't have the separation of, of by distance between these these boards, right? So I'm gonna push and see how much different the distance I could get between them. The next thing, parts differences between these and the original EAR setups. I did go online and found some schematics that shows these with a higher value and these with, uh, well, some of these have a higher value of 0.15 microfarads and these are 0.1, okay? As, as we sh I showed you before on the board, they're labeled 0.15, but the kit included 0.1. So the other thing too is that there are a million EAR schematics online because people often upgrade them and they upgrade these um, kits or these units and then they post their, their findings online and they recommend certain improvements, right? So I don't really know what <clears throat> schematic is the best thing to follow. So as I'm doing this project on, on YouTube, of a kit the whole purpose of this is to to do what comes with the kit and what the results are and what little challenges i face so i'm not going to modify this in the duration of this video because it defeats the purpose really i wanted to demonstrate what little um difficulties i come across and how i overcome them i didn't want to come and make a video after I had everything figured out i wanted to share the the difficulties that a, a average uh, DIY home assembler would would face, right? So those little parts. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the included parts, but I have ordered a, a upgrade set of capacitors, right? I've ordered. Um, I have I have some upgrades for these. I've ordered a supposed upgrade for these. It may not really be. Yeah, well, yeah, actually a pretty good upgrade. Solen. Solon brand capacitors, and I um, ordered new um, silver mica capacitors to replace these two because these are out of spec. They're supposed to be 110, and one is reading at 125, and one is reading at 145, something like that. So I would get an unevenness in the RIAA circuit between the channels, so they need to be upgraded, right? But I'm going to do that after this is all completed i'll do another little segment at the end with the upgraded capacitors to see if i hear something another issue that occurred to me now that i'm ready to assemble the enclosure first of all i have to go and drill holes for these the layout of these boards i'm going to do that now but while i'm looking at this i really wanted to actually hook up two turntables two of my old techniques turntables so that i wouldn't always have to reach around in the back of this and swap RCA cables into this jack, the set of jacks, anytime I wanted to switch turntables. I was hoping to drill an extra set of holes, have the extra jacks, okay? So you can plug in two turntables. However, I do suspect that having both turntables plugged in at the same time would have a negative effect. Surely having two moving magnet cartridges plugged in exactly parallel to each other the unused one would create a load on the impedance i guess of the one that's in use right so of course a solution to that would be to put two pairs of jacks but to put a little two-way toggle to switch between them i have that toggle switch and i can do that modification but to drill an extra set of holes here it's gonna look funky is it going to look too funky? Will you people watching this video get mad at me for doing that? I could also build an external box where two turntables could be plugged in with a switch. And then one, one set of output RCAs that comes into here. I'm probably going to do that. So I could put that little external switcher box in a more convenient location for switching. I wouldn't have to reach down in the back of this unit to switch turntables wherever I may set it up. Okay, so I, I wanted to drill this up, but um, the way it's neatly labeled and nice looking, I'm not going to. What I really wanted was an extra pair of RCAs and another little hole for a jack to switch between them. I may do it. Who knows? But I won't do it for this video. 
Okay, here's my method for drilling the holes to locate these boards. I have a rough layout here, but I have to assemble the board to make sure that when I put these front and back panels in place, the inner parts won't bump into where the jacks go. Okay, so I'm actually going to assemble the board, put on the front and back panel parts, then make my board layout. Okay. And what I should have done, of course, as I just said, I am learning as I go along. I should have done this when these boards were unpopulated and blank because I could have, they would have sat a little flatter onto the metal below, right? Because right now I've got to put them where I want them, make sure they're sitting square and just put like, a, take a little Sharpie marker or any other kind of, maybe a silver marker and poke through and put dots in between these holes here. And those would be my drill points, right? But it would have been a little better if, if, it, if there were no parts on it, okay? So that's something to keep in mind. These transformers are pretty straightforward. I have to look at some diagrams and figure out, should I put it this way or should I put it that way? I'm not quite sure yet. And I still have no clue how I'm going to wire the power switch. The power switch has, a, I think, a blue LED built in. And so that's why it's got five terminals instead of four but I have yet to figure out how to wire this up. I have no idea. All the pictures I see online, there's a huge piece of heat shrink covering all of this where the, the wires connect and I haven't figured out that wiring yet. Okay, so top and bottom, identical size. I'm taking it that this with the vents is the top. If I wanted to drill extra holes in that for to see the tubes or something, that's the panel I would do, but I'm, I'm gonna leave it alone, right? So this is the bot bottom. So yeah, I think the method here is to start by bolting the side extrusions onto either bottom or top panel. Well, here we go. This is looking very nice. If the camera would focus, that would be even nicer. Come on, camera. Come on, camera. Okay, okay. Right, so as you can see, thick, thick, thick pieces of aluminum. Look at that, that's real thick. That's like 5 sixteenths, right? Heavy extruded sides, three millimeters or more. Thick. This is about an eighth of an inch or more. So it looks real nice. It looks so professional. It looks so much more rugged than any enclosure you normally see when you bought components like CD players or tape decks. Those things always had a very thin sheet metal. It was thin as a piece of hair. Right, and there's the labeling on the back. It's looking nice. And here is the top panel. So it, it looks so cool. It just sounds good before you even turn it on. Right? Wouldn't you just like to have that in your pile of stereo equipment? So we're off to a good start. Okay, folks? So I'm going to open up now. Set this aside. So I'll put my parts in here where I believe they're going to go. Sorry for the POV movement of the camera. But I'm just trying to do so much at the same time. Okay, and then I'll power supply board. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the RCA jacks in and see how close I could squeeze this board in the corner. Right? I could probably put it like that. Okay? Right up in the corner. And then leave room for plenty of room for the power cord. I've got to do something over here. I'm still not sure how I'm hooking up that power power cable. The uh, sorry, power switch. And then I could put this right up on the front. Because there's nothing mounted here that's going to interfere with the spacing so i can put this right up in the corner put that right up in the corner there the only thing i have to make a little bit of room for it turns out is just leave enough room between the transformer and the power switch because that sticks in kind of like this it's got about an inch needs about an inch clearance on the inside so i'm going to push that maybe i should go sideways maybe. I'm not quite sure which way. In the photo that I looked at, they have it this way. And transformer orientation is important. I'm not familiar with these types of cores, 
But when it comes to normal tube amps, like um, regular guitar amps, I know how to lay out the transformers across the chassis. You've got to keep them all nine, as, as much 90 degrees um, apart as you can. So this looks like my layout right now. And all I need to do is take a nice little silver marker, which I have here, poke the holes where I want them, and then take this apart, take this off, and drill those holes. Okay, so I have to do transformer, four for the transformer, six for the circuit board, main circuit board, four here. And I also have to take into consideration feet. There's a pack of feet here, which I might do a little extra shock mounting on these. These are rubber, but they're a bit stiff. Okay, I've gone through and just put some little pencil marks where the standoff's got to go. You'll see a few here for the power transformer. Just put a little pencil marks where all the mounting points were. Hit the spot with a little punch and a mallet there. And I've drilled all the holes on my drill press. Best money I've ever spent. Best tool I have. And um, so I did one eighth holes for all of the circuit board mounting points, but I put three sixteenths for the corners, which have spaced one inch from each edge. And I put 3 16 holes for the power transformer mounting points because those are a little bit heavier of a bolt that I have to use. It didn't include, the, the pack didn't include mounting bolts for this. So what I'm going to end up using will be 3 16 And I'm even thinking of putting a little bit of a rubber pad, a high temperature rubber pad below the transformer to see if there's any chance that it makes vibrations. It will be a little more isolated from the chassis. There's a little bit of oil residue left from the bits because I drilled the bits with a little bit of oil on the um, oil on the um, drill bit tip. I'll clean that off and I get back to assembling. Okay, so I'm starting to put on the standoff turrets. They're brass, very nice. Excuse me, I have a lot of cuts on my fingers. Um, about a centimeter tall and just under an eighth of an inch. I'm not sure what metric measurement is. So I'm putting in a little bolt from the underside, a little machine screw from the underside, and then I screw on the brass standoff on the inside. It's about 3 16 of an inch, so I'm using a, a nice um, 3 16 driver to put those in. Trying a little something here, I don't know if it's really necessary, but I have these silicone high temperature strips, and I mean they are really high temperature, right? So I've put two little strips of they're about a quarter inch thick and they're just underneath the, the power transformer with the same mounting bolts I would normally use. And yeah, so these shouldn't be bothered by the, the heat. And um, hopefully it does a little something to shock mount the transformer if it does in fact make vibrations. We'll, we'll see how that goes. I don't know if it's really necessary, but it's just something I'm trying. Hmm. Problems folks, I'm trying to put on these RCA jacks. The problem is this panel is thick enough and the threading on this looks like this is short enough that I'm not getting this this nut to grip the threading. It's just turning. This one this one went on. Actually you can see uh, this is this is not up to the job. Either the panel is too thick or the threading is too short. So we got up we got a fail here on the RCA connectors. Okay, folks, well, as careful as I've tried to be, I've screwed up a few little connections here. I put this in the wrong spot so that the capacitors were bumping into the RCA connectors. So I've taken this out. And because I have taken this out, and I, I do think that I'm going to be changing these capacitors in the future, just not to this in the future, I've gone ahead and put on these terminals, these screw terminals, which I had figured I would just solder directly. Probably I won't solder those directly until I've replaced these capacitors, if I ever do. <clears throat> Next thing I need to do, I need to enlarge a bit of a countersink behind these holes so that these RCA connectors could fit a little deeper into that hole. Because again, this plate is a bit too thick for the amount of threading that's available there. Moving on, I've figured out some of the 
power transformer connections I weren't sure was not sure about. Turns out that this power supply wants 12.6 volts for the heaters and this Trump power transformer has two 6.3 windings which are these here brown and white so what I need to do is I actually need to snip a white snip a brown braid them together and solder them and heat shrink them and then use the other two as the 12.6 wires to go in and feed the heater circuit regarding the primary windings there's two of them and they can be put in series with each other for 230 volt operation or parallel to each other for 115 which is what I want to do so what I need to do in this case following this after attach basically the black to the gray then attach the red to the orange and then feed those to the primary circuit which is simply sending one pair of wires to the neutral of the IC connector and then the hot side of the IEC connector I would go to it would go through the fuse and it would go through the power switch then that would go to the other set of primaries I'm still not sure how to wire all of the part the terminals on the switch yet to be figured out okay I've done a few things here I've run these green and and yellow wires over to these sections here which are the high voltages I figured out what's going on with the switch it has a three terminal S single pole double throw and I only need two of those terminals so I've hooked those up with these black wires which will go to the the um, power cord and I figured out that also on the outside were two LED connections and I just needed to run the same heater voltage that the, the brown and white wires here double back onto the same switch and those don't have a switch on as soon as the main power transformer switched on and voltage goes here then heater voltage will come back here and light up the switch so that's been figured out also on the output of the regulator board here I have these two high voltage sections each with um, positive and negative they're, they're run separately and then this one is for the DC heaters it's 12.6 volts DC rectified and that's going to go to the here and I'm going to hook all that up now before moving on to the real primary winding okay I'm almost done I've done the primary wiring here I need to just neaten up these wires and that is from the IEC connector one goes to directly to the primary which is the white one the black one is the one that goes through the switch to the transformer and then I put a ground connection down here directly to the chassis and I've connected three things um, the main ground from the, the power cable the ground from the phono ground connector there for the, the turntable itself and then this screen wire which I believe is an internal shield noise shield um, so that's it now of course on any project like this the grounding issue is a very important one so you cannot just tie all grounds together there's certain grounds that are go together um, so until further notice I've just left those three together power cable transformer grounding and turntable grounding the signal wires that is signal coming in from the turntable and going out to the rest of the stereo those grounds are pretty much floated separately to these and that's the thing that we discussed before where the grounding went through these little capacitors okay so again that's until further notice because it could be that when I put it all together and plug it in it makes funny grounding noises and I may have to readjust some grounds but that's it for now okay I think that's it primary wiring done 
power connection power from one board to the next that's the heater it's this one and then these are the high voltage all the inputs and outputs connected to their respective spots so what i need to do now put a fuse in and plug it in for the first time switch it on after that put tubes in and make sure that's running fine as well okay first thing first my cable is plugged in here fuse in right so we've got basic power coming in that is 120 volts coming in going to the power regulator board and sending back lights to the LED here there's a little LED light on the board there you can see that's right there and you can see that's illuminated as well so let me go ahead and test the rest of the voltages coming out of that first power board here good news I've gotten 260 volts here 260 volts here on each of these pairs and I got a pretty high measurement for the heaters at about 15, 15 point something. And I realized that this little blue pot here is an adjustment for the output here. So I was able to adjust it right exactly over to 12.6. Oh, there we go. So that's 12.6. As I said, that was just about 15 and a half and I adjusted it all the way down. So this is working very nicely. Now I get to pop some tubes in. And let's see how, if those voltages um, stabilize and so on. Right, okay, I'll put some new tubes in. I had a couple of Westinghouse labeled tubes in, in these boxes dated to 1976 I had two of those I put those in those over on the left and then I had a mullard a couple of mullard ECC 83s so I put that one there and hopefully those work nice and quiet and sound very balanced from left to right but that's it I get to sign off on this put the lid on and I'm gonna take it into my room and check it out with the turntable Again, I'm going to come back and do this project a, a bit of a mod of changing these, capa these yellow capacitors here and a couple of others. So though I'm done building it, I'm not done with the actual sound test, which I will include at the end of this video. Hmm, off to a bad start. We have a lot of hum, a lot of hissing and crackling. You can hear. So some troubleshooting is necessary. I'm also hearing a lot of noise and tapping on the tube, so it may be a microphonics issue or some big ground problem. Okay people, I did a little reading online and I think I figured out the problem. Right now you can hear that hum, and that hum is a 60 hertz hum coming through the whole system. And I read online that if my heater circuit that's this pair of wires is not referenced to ground then it would be humming like crazy now i wasn't sure what's up because i assumed that this whole power supply board here would take care of that problem and not leave me with a unground reference heater circuit but it seems that is the case so i put a little jumper wire that's going from the ground lug over to um and i'm gonna i'm gonna touch this screw here this last screw terminal on the left and boom you can hear the sound completely disappear and if i had a third finger i could touch my cartridge needle and you hear whether the, the circuit is actually active and fully running with this dead quiet situation so that is the problem this wire or this terminal should be connected to ground right now when it comes to um, guitar amp circuits I would have been more familiar with this issue because it's usually run on AC and those AC um, heater voltages are 
referenced to ground in different ways. But because this is a, a DC heater circuit that's all built in, I assumed wrongly that that was done. So I'm just going to put some sort of a permanent ground wire here and I'm going to get back to listening to see how this thing sounds. Okay, so I'm back in the workshop briefly and we have a list of things to do. We've got to change this jumper for a proper ground wire and I got today a pack of capacitors that are the correct or upgrade values that should be in this. As I mentioned before, a couple of the parts, I think it was the these dark brown treble capacitors here measured a little out of spec from each other. They're supposed to be 110 picofarad and one measured 125 and the other one measured 140. So we can't have those kind of imbalances in the RIAA part of the circuit. So I've bought these silver mica type capacitors. I think these are hundreds. These are hundreds and these are tens, so I parallel them together to, to make the hundred and ten value. And then also to these yellow ones here, um, people aren't all in love with those. So I bought a brand called Solon Fast Capacitors. I know there's all different brands you could buy for this job, but um, these I guess are good. They were on the upper end of the price range and I've also... I've always read that they were they were good good for something, right? So it's an upgrade. These other yellow ones are Mallory's, which are what these are in imitation of, right? So these are these are Mallory lookalikes, right? And these are the real thing. Also, too, I have a brand called Aura Cap to replace this one. This is the one microfarad, and these are point one. So these will replace the point one, and I already had in my part straw over here some one microfarad. That's these big, these big guys here. Ah, sorry. So that's that'll be these. Okay. Now again, it's working. I've listened to this for a week. I've enjoyed it very much. It sounds great. It's so quiet. I didn't think I need to do the thing I mentioned of putting a, a metal wall in between the power supply and the the preamp itself. I could do that, but I'm 99% feeling not to bother. Okay, yes, the 1% OCD compulsive part of us could do it. I don't even think it's necessary. So, I'm going to change these capacitors. Same values, just different upgrade brands. So, the effort is not to tweak the preamp, it's just to put in supposedly better quality. If I had changed the value of some of these, you could hear a little more bass or whatever it is, but they're the same value. So we're going with the stock circuit for this project. So my hot, my soldering iron is hot. Let's get to changing those parts and adding in that little ground there. Okay, so I've put the new caps in, these red ones, these black ones and kind of stack together. It's not the neatest thing in the world, but parallel together are the 100 and 110, which are in the RIAA circuit. You can see some screw-ups I did before. I put this board too close to this wall, right? So, and I and, and lined up in such a way that this capacitor was bumping into these jacks. So I had to, to put some wires and put them at a right angle bit of a mess there. I've put the little jumper on the heater circuit here to, to ground one side of it, the negative side of the DC 12.6 volts. And that's it. So I get to button this up. Now I have a little comment. I had two Westinghouse tubes that were NOS new in boxes and I put them in and I also had a nice looking mullard 
original English ECC83. And I put that in this position, which is the first gain stage. These are the second gain stages, and these are the cathode followers. So I put my mullet right up front, and it was hellaciously noisy. It was microphonic so badly that if you just tapped it, you were hearing um, actually anything that you tapped, you would hear it coming through the this into this the system into the amplifiers. Right? It was horribly noisy. So that was disappointing because I had such a nice stash of old tubes to go through and the one that I had picked out was that mullet. Now here is some of my tube stash. You see some preamp tubes here and all along here is miscellaneous stuff. Miscellaneous 9 pins, 6A7, 6A5, 50s, EL34s, rectifier tubes, Russia and China, 6L6. And these, a couple of boxes here full of, full of old USA 6L6s. Um, not new, mostly stuff I've just pulled out of old gear. So this little container has my good old original brands, you know, RCAs, GEs, Mullards. I have a Telefunken hanging around somewhere. So I'm going to go through this and try to pick a top premium old tube to go in this position. I have so many guitar amplifiers. This is just a little bit of my amps. I have about 20 amps and of course a lot of those good tubes are used in those amps so I have to rack my brain a bit to see which amp I could look in to scavenge out an old mullet or whatever but right here I have some good stuff so I'm gonna go through pick out a few good tubes to try and I'll swap them one by one into that position to see which performs best. What worked well so far was a modern JJ ECC 83S and that worked fine or I could have put this here and put the Westinghouse there. Westinghouse is a brand but I'm not sure what actual original factory tube that is. But I have some cool stuff to go through so that'll be part of the process when I reinstall this back into the system. Okay so I've gone through this tub a bit. I've set a few aside here. These are more maybe modern ones. A lot of GEs and a lot of RCAs here, but I've in this little set I've put aside. You guys can give me some feedback if you know anything about these. I found an RCA, a couple of RCA 7025s. Um, we have here a Raytheon black plates. I don't know much about these, but a quick search online tells me that these are good. And then I found two. This is an Amperex Bugle Boy, made in Holland. And then over here we have two more Mullard ECC83s made in Great Britain. These are the originals, not modern reissues. So I'm going to test and see if these hopefully are not noisy because as, as I said the other one I have is, is noisy. I have a bunch of GEs as well but I don't think, I think I have a lot of problems with GEs with noise in my guitar amps. But I can definitely pull out a few GEs as well and have some fun sorting through all of those in that first position or, or wherever else. But again, I've left these Westinghouse in here. Okay, people, I hooked this up in my room last night and I had some problems and I'm starting to get annoyed. You know, the home stretch of a project where little things bother you. That's where we are now. Couple problems. I found that this jumper I had added from the heater negative to the this um, grounded turret mount here did not seem to solve the grounding problem so I started to hear some 120 hertz noise and when I jump at this again to try and figure out what I could do to make it quieter these ones the high voltage negatives started um, quietening things down and that's not how it was before so that kind of annoyed me and it means also too that I've got to undo this ground bridge here and do it the way this is, which is to go directly to this main star ground. So I have to do that and hope, hope that settles things down. Also too, I swapped a whole bunch of tubes in here, my old used, um, old used American and European tubes. And the damn things, most of them were noisy. My, all my mullets were noisy. And I said, you know what, this JJ, brand new JJ was working okay. I'm just going to leave that in for the time being. 
The last thing that's annoying me, the third thing, is that I don't think I like these caps. These upgrade capacitors that I've put in, these Solons, I just plug this thing into the same stereo setup and I played the same, the last record that I listened to. And I have to be honest, I, I think I prefer these, these previous yellow caps. So, um, not to be hasty, I'm going to leave these in for a while, let them break in, whatever that means. Does that mean that my ears get accustomed to it? Or does it mean that they actually sort of um, break, you know, really break in and sound better? I couldn't really say at the moment. Um, you know, it's going to be a bit of both. But I'm going to leave them in for now. But my initial impression is that I prefer the, the, the stock ones. Um, I would say that about the big capacitors. I wouldn't really say that. Uh, I don't really want to say that about the Silver Mica RIAA treble cap upgrades. Because the ones I took out, which are hanging around here somewhere, they really were out of spec. So, well, they weren't even with each other. So I don't want to... Um, I don't want to give these any credit in the equation, but these may actually get the credit of sounding better than those Solen Fast. These are metallized polypropylene, and these are not, I'm not sure what they are, except to assume that they're polypropylene, which seems to be the common type in hi-fi gear. Polyester seems to be more common in guitar gear. Okay, so let me move on, and hopefully I can fix my grounding issue now okay so i've gone and redone my grounds again and this black wire here is mimicking that jumper wire before that had solved the noise problem so jumpering from here to that little mounting column there was creating a further ground loop but going directly to the main star ground seems to have solved the problem so i'm still hearing a bit of noise if i switch um, on my preamp between this phono and other things, you can hear a bit of noise. Let's see if you could hear any. On. Off. There's a little bit of 120 hertz hum. But I have to say that it's not objectionable. So before where I said maybe I'll put a screen across here to shield noise, maybe I will go ahead and do that. And... Um, see if there's anything to be gained but for now i guess i have the best ground set up the way it is now so i'm going to listen again let's see if i can't learn to love these capacitors a bit more okay i'm back in the workshop again and i've really convinced myself that i didn't like how these capacitors were sounding these solens um, the red one is the brand is audio filer and um, I put the older ones back in just to really confirm if I do actually prefer them. So I'm going to go and listen now. Right. And um, I hope that's it. Okay. I'm back spinning this record here. I'm um, just listening to a little Motown Marvin Gaye. I don't want to actually run the track because I don't want YouTube to, to cut me off with sound restrictions. Anyway, I'm quite determined that those stock capacitors sound better than the upgrades if i may put it into words you know this is too subjective but the stock ones had a little extra bass a bit of a thump in the chest they had great character through the low to upper mids where all of the saxophone piano snare drum guitars vocals had this clear 3d image okay each one was very distinct from each other when i put in the fancy upgrade caps I lost some bass and I found that all of the mid-range was just a blur all of the I could yes I hear piano yes I hear snare drum yes vocals guitar everything but it's all just mushed together it's didn't have a 3d sound stage so to speak right so I put back the originals and let's give some credit these guys, we you know, we kind of look at this stuff on eBay as cheap made in China clone kits that are just being churned out. But it seems to me that the guys building this stuff are sitting and listening to the components and choosing wisely. 
as far as what is included in the kit, right? So again, I'm going to enjoy listening to the rest of this record. So wonderful, in conclusion, wonderful physical construction. The case is awesome. It looks good. It's thick aluminum and it is just really nice looking, right? Quality of parts included. Top, top notch because even when I tried to upgrade, the stock ones were better, okay? And the sound is very, very pleasing. Nice, rich 3D sound. Some records I'm playing, I feel like the the band or the vocals are in the room with me, right? And you can't ask for more than that. So two big thumbs up from me on this EAR Phono clone. Well, I keep saying I'm done, but there's always, there was a bit more to say on the, um, the topic. I, before, all right, so, I had just listened to this album, Motown Gold, and I listened to Def Leppard's Hysteria. And I ran out to my workshop, switched the capacitors back to the stock ones. And I ran back in here and listened to the same stuff again, the Def Leppard and the Motown Gold. And the listening experience was completely different. This was the first time I listened to this album, was with the upgrade capacitors there run back inside listen to it again it's a different experience it's a huge difference in the 3d mid-range sound stage as they say so folks if you're playing around with tubes and you're sorting through dozens of different tubes and spending a bunch of money trying different tubes you know what buy a bag of capacitors and spend some time switching through different types of capacitors with the same tubes because you know what i think you're going to have just as much potential improvement and just as much variation as as tube rolling so how about you get into capacitor rolling because it is a huge difference in the listening experience that's my last word thank you